Funny Feuds is an ongoing series where we talk about the behind-the-scenes battles of the people that make us laugh. In today's episode, we're talking about John Lovitz and Edie Dick. Matthew, prepare yourself for the stinging blades what? of the windmill! <laughs> you probably know who Andy Dick is, but in case you don't, here's a brief glimpse into his personality. I came here to make a big time, and now Andy Dick is sexually harassing me at the comedy store. Andy! with Andy Dick harassing, like sexually harassing me. It's private. Come here. That's my, you know, that's my bro. You know what I mean? Wait. Wait. Uh, Andy. No, don't put my pants. Somebody <laughs> call the cops. No. Somebody. Andy. To say the least, he likes to take things too far. In 1997, Andy was at a Christmas party for the cast of News Radio, hosted by his fellow cast member Phil Hartman and his wife Bryn. It was a small party, but Andy, being Andy, decided to break out the cocaine. The story goes that Bryn asked Andy for some, and Andy obliged, not knowing that Bryn had been sober for the past 10 years. The two were already on the rocks. But Bryn's drug use at this party caused an argument between her and Phil that ended with him threatening to leave her if she was going to start using drugs again. The couple's problems spiraled, and five months after their party, the worst happened. We begin with a murder investigation that has stunned the entertainment world. Phil Hartman, who gained fame on Saturday Night Live, was found shot dead in his home, apparently killed by his wife, who then committed suicide. ABC's Carla Wool has more from Los Angeles. At 6.20 this morning, residents of this upscale Encino neighborhood called police to report gunshots coming from the Hartman's gated estate. Officers arrived to find a nine-year-old boy and a six-year-old girl by the front door, both obviously upset. As they were taking the children out of the house, officers heard a gunshot in the master bedroom. There they discovered comedian Phil Hartman dead. Authorities say it appears his wife Bryn shot him, then turned the gun on herself. Phil was replaced on news radio, which had just been renewed for a fifth season, by his close friend and SNL castmate John Lovitz. To this day, John Lovitz won't even talk about his time on news radio in interviews because he hates the circumstances that led to him joining the cast. John was devastated by Phil's death and felt that Andy was to blame, and that if Andy hadn't given the cocaine to Bryn, Phil would still be alive. Bryn had been intoxicated on a mixture of Zoloft, alcohol, and cocaine at the time of the murder-suicide. Things were tense on set between John and Andy, and at one point after Andy had been giving John a hard time, things escalated to the point where Andy told John, well, you shouldn't be here, to which John replied, well, I wouldn't be here if you hadn't given Bryn Coke in the first place. The timeline of the next two events is a bit unclear, but we know that at one point the two made up, with John apologizing to Andy for what he said and saying that he realized it wasn't really his fault. Then, sometime later, Andy visited a restaurant that John was the partial owner of. John also happened to be at the restaurant with a friend and had been treated to some peach liqueurs by the table next to them. Andy allegedly approached the table and downed both drinks. According to John, Andy then smiled and said to him, I put the Phil Hartman hex on you. You're the next one to die. John was angered and had Andy removed and banned from the restaurant. Then the final documented confrontation between the two occurred in June of 2007 at the Laugh Factory. Unfortunately, there's no video of what happened at the Laugh Factory that night. Betcha Kramer wishes that were the case the year before, too. But along with John, there are two accounts from people who were at the Laugh Factory that night, club owner Jamie Masada and Godfrey, who was emceeing that night. Andy popped into the Laugh Factory and did a surprise guest spot, which angered John, who was also in attendance that night. After his set, Andy approached John, who had no intention of speaking with him. John demanded that Andy apologize for the Phil Hartman Hex comment he had made previously. First, Andy said he had no recollection of saying that, then Andy reportedly said, you know why I said it? Because you said I killed Phil Hartman. Andy, apparently unable to read the room, went on to ask John to be in his new movie. John then grabbed Andy and said, I don't want to be in your movie. I don't want to be in your life. John then bashed Andy's head into the bar over and over until the two were separated by security. Jamie Masada said as much right after the fact, telling news outlets, quote, John picked Andy up by the head and smashed him into the bar four or five times and blood started pouring out of his nose. 
John said the same in an interview with Dennis Miller a month later, telling Dennis, I just lost it, so I grabbed him by the shirt and I pushed him against the wall. And he's just smiling at me. And then I realized, ooh, here's my chance. So I grabbed him by his shirt and pushed him really hard, and I smashed his back and his head into the bar. And I did it again. I would have kept going, but the doorman broke it up. In the same interview, John commented on the event saying, I'm not proud of it, but he's a disgusting human being. And all the comedians are glad I did it because this guy is an asshole. Godfrey also recently told his account of what happened that night on his podcast. I'm like, shit, I run back up. Hey, Andy Dick, everybody. Ooh. And John Lovitz <laughs> is slamming Andy Dick against the wall in the lobby. Really? There's a fight with at John Lovitz going like, you motherfucker. <laughs> trying to whoop his ass. John Lovitz. John Lovitz. <laughs> About a week after the fight, TMZ cameraman asked about the incident to John outside of the Laugh Factory, where he seemed to be able to joke about it. Hey, do you have any uh, comments on Andy Dick, fight with Andy? Yeah. No personal yeah. opinion? Who are you? Who are you? Huh? I'm with TMZ. Yes, I hear uh, Andy wants to fight Harvey Levin. <laughs> really? That's what I heard. That's well, that would be a fair fight. Yeah. A month after the fight, Andy went on Tom Green Live and said he had no idea about Bryn Hartman's sister of drug problems and that she would have gotten the drugs from someone, if not him. I, I don't want to come out here and be full of shit. Yeah. Like Lovitz is. Okay. I don't... <laughs> How so? John Lovitz is just full of shit, you know. Really? Because I could have been... I didn't even want to come on. Because I don't want to do publicity. Yeah, I I'll do that. your show anytime yeah. you ask. Yeah. But tonight, I didn't want to because I haven't done it. I'm going to reiterate my point. I have not gone on any fucking show yeah. since this fucking goddamn Love It shit. Can you guys settle now? Sorry. This Love It thing went down and it upset me. It did upset I me. I understand. Yeah. It upset me. The guy's trying to fuck with my livelihood, which means he's, I'm like a papa bear here. He's trying to fuck with my kid's future. So now, I think what's going on. Oh, here's what, you can, you can put this on YouTube. Whether I gave uh, Phil Hartman's wife cocaine, which I don't know if I did or not, it's, you know, it would be like if I died tonight because I asked you for coke and you said, yeah, I happen to have some that my friend gave me, yeah, here, go, do it. And you didn't know I had a problem, or you, you're, you're like, oh, he he must always do it. He's it's like his vitamin C, right. it's, 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 it's vitamin to him. He needs it, and then you give it to him. But I die. Would you think you killed me? Uh, can I say no comment? I don't know. <laughs> no, I, I guess not. No. That, that, my point is, is that, look, if you're looking. To, if, if you're looking to get drunk, you're going to go to a bar. If you're looking for drugs, you're going to go to somebody who you think has blow. So, you know, she is somebody that that night wanted to get high, and she, oh, he must have it. Do you have any? Yeah, maybe I do. And then that happened, and I'm, I, didn't, I didn't know anything about her past. Yeah. I didn't know any of that. If he truly didn't know about Bryn's sobriety, he has a point there. It's not like a celebrity's wife would have any trouble finding cocaine in L.A. if she wanted it. But taunting his close friend who blamed you after the fact was definitely asking for trouble. For the record, Andy also said that John didn't actually beat him up. Yes, yeah. just, just and that's all. I really I don't I don't want to bag on anybody. I just I don't bag on people. I really don't. But if right. they get on, he that guy seems to be trying to single-handedly take me down and out. That, well, it ain't gonna happen. Start at, but he's what, trying real hard to yeah. start something that I'm not gonna. I'm not going to feel or feed into. Edge to I'm not it. Gonna, I, yeah, but, but he's, how, how, he's how, a very angry person, so yeah. I just feel bad for him. So did you, I really did you, do. Did you I, get in a fight I, with John I, I feel like maybe I started something that I meant as a joke, and he right. just got really angry. Right. He did take me by the lapels and throw me against the wall, uh -huh. and I was startled. And I, I, then I thought, oh, he's making a, he's doing a funny one of those characters. Like, that's the ticket. I'll throw you against the wall. That's the ticket. But it wasn't one of his funny little characters. He, he was mad. Well, he, <laughs> he, was, was he was mad. He was upset. And he, he held you up mad. against the wall. No, you can't pick but he, me he up. Didn't, I'm he, like didn't, 155. he didn't bash your head on the. No, the I wasn't near us. the bar. That's where it sounded like it was. I wasn't even near the bar. We were in the outer lobby. John and Andy seem to not have interacted since, at least publicly, and the feud has fizzled itself out 
and at this point the entire thing has become just something that gets posted on Reddit every month or so. But at one point it was a feud between a grief-stricken friend and the guy who couldn't stop taking things too far. Thanks for watching. This is one of two videos in this new series being released on this channel today. Click here to watch the other one. Feel free to subscribe as more are coming soon.